Hello class, in this video we're going to go into more of bump maps or enhancing your building materials uh, through a tool through through Enscape here. So um, basically it's pretty simple in Enscape, which is one reason why I really like Enscape because it makes these things simple. Um, you could probably do it better and much more sophisticated software for more time, but the quick and ease and, and for architecture, this really works great. So there's basically two materials that need bump maps in my model. I'm gonna do the wood siding first. I'll probably just for simplicity's sake, make another video for the brick. Um, they're just done very similarly, but there is a little trick, the way of thinking about these things that we need to cover when we, get, when we deal with brick. So I opened up my, my Enscape materials, which is this button here, brings up this dialog box, and I'm gonna find the material, um, which I called cladding siding tan uh, the same will be for the red siding that i have as well in this so here's your material con controls and bump map is what basically you takes a flat surface and it says hey make the surface either stick out or stick in so give a little bit of three-dimensional quality to this and, it, and for things like uh materials this is great because the siding the surface is out further than the uh, joints, which is basically a hole. So that's sort of pushed back. And so we can sort of fake that without actually have to modeling it all. Now we could create our own bump map and I have videos on how to do that, but Enscape allows us to sort of simplify and make one automatically from the SketchUp material. And so to do that, what I'm gonna do is gonna go to my material, go to bump map and use albedo. All right, and you'll notice what actually happened was this thing came appeared up up here. So I'm going to select on this bump map, and bump maps are always from white to black. This happened because of the color I use. It happened to put the side in gray, and that's okay. Black is essentially going to be pushed into the image, and so since my joint is black, this these joints are going to actually be rendered slightly pushed into the image. Gray, about 50% gray will stay. Uh, gray will stay flat, which is about what this is, and anything above that towards white will start to be pushed out. But since I want my siding basically flat, I can do that with these pushed in. Um, and there we go. So that's what a bump map looks like. That's quickly how it works. I'll go into more detail in class because we'll have lecture content. And then when I come over here to bump map, I can actually change how much it is. So this number changes how deep in or not it goes. So I can actually reverse that. Uh, by going into the negative directions, or I can go up. So if I have it set to the maximum of 10, it'll push as far deep in as possible and push as far out as possible. You know, five would be sort of its halfway point and three and so on and so forth. So I think three for siding is probably a pretty good number. Uh, it'll produce a little bit of effect. Doesn't have to be perfect. 2.9 is fine. Uh, and I'm looking at this number when I say that. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you know, we just want to enhance the joint a little bit. So when we render, it's going to be all that much uh, more realistic. And it, if we go over to our preview, I'll, I'll zoom in. If I, if I go to a preview here, this is what it's going to look like. At this scale, at this sort of preview rendering, we're not going to see much at all. Certainly, if I come in here, I can zoom into my building a little bit uh, and then come back to Enscape. And you can sort of see it almost has an effect of like uh, these being rounded uh, corners with these being pushed back in a little bit, just a little bit to, to enhance its realism. Um, it's quick and easy. Uh, so could I set something up uh, more complicated? I could, um, and, I'll, and I'll talk about that here when we talk about this horizontal siding, what I mean by that comment. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think it's needed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to SketchUp, I'm gonna go back to this material. I'm gonna look at the red side, I'm gonna do it exactly the same way. Um, I gotta remember what I called that material now. Yeah, so I called it material one and I did cut the video because I had to figure it out. Uh, I didn't label it cleanly. I actually just went over to my materials to my house and then clicked on it and it, and it comes up automatically. So if you don't remember what name, like like uh, I did, then that's one way of figuring it out. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna come, I'm gonna have that material selected. I'm gonna hit use albedo on, for the bump map and it's gonna create the bump map just like it did before. And I'll just keep the setting at three so it sort of matches the other set, uh, setting. And that's it, I'll, I'm done with the siding and I can go sort of preview it and see so you get the look. Now, again, what I was, what I was gonna say, I'm just gonna talk through this very briefly it has nothing to do with this rendering. 
Uh, but again, I think I go over this in another video because I have some videos where we get into more of the complexities of making higher quality bump maps than what this very quick auto generated bump maps will do. Because sort of horizontal siding, they tend to be, you know, they tend to be deeper on the bottom of the siding and skinnier at the top. So that's so the siding can overlap. That's actually going to require a gradient of darker color to a whiter color. And a bump map can produce that effect, but you would have to take it into Photoshop and you'd have to sort of create that black and white gradient from top to bottom, make it the very dark line for the joint in between and so on and so forth. So um, sometimes it's you, you can go ahead and do that. Sometimes you want to enhance the wood grain. That again, that might be requiring to go into Photoshop and sort of playing with brightness contrast to make the grain lines darker so that you can then see those in the bump map. And sometimes those are sort of things you need. Uh, I'm not requiring that for this assignment. Again, if you're really interested in that, go ahead and look into it. Just search my YouTube channel or anybody else's for content like that. Uh, but I do love how Enscape makes simple bump maps quick and easy, which the reality is I don't usually show architecture like this on the screen. I usually show it pushed out like this and that little bit of effect goes a long way that super detailed stuff that takes a bunch of time to make custom bump maps is is uh, almost unrecognizable when you view a building from this far away so uh, anything that requires a bump map go ahead and use I'm going to show a couple more and follow up videos particularly brick because there's one little it's done exactly the same way but with one little trick and I'll explain why in that video